lovely folks, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. That didn't rhyme, but it sounded like it did. <laughs> My name is Katie Carson. I am the primary soap artist here at this channel. And today we are gonna be making a soap with only natural colorants. Only one natural colorant to be more specific. And we will also experience another case of paranormal color morphing. This freaks me out every single time it happens. And then somehow it magically writes itself. If you aren't following me on Instagram, I have two, one for royalty soaps and soap stuff, and then one for personal stuff, which eventually I will be updating, sorry. As many of you know, I have two new products launching in May, and I have been working on them for now over nine months. Nine months. And what with that and nesting, because I am really far along in my pregnancy at this point, I'm just kind of swamped. I'm also trying to get ahead on videos because I know once I have a baby, we're gonna have to take at least a little time off. Anyway, enough about me. Let's get into the soap making video, shall we? We are gonna begin by pouring our lye water solution into our oils. They are both right at 87 degrees, 85 degrees Fahrenheit-ish. And now we're gonna blend until just past emulsion. That emulsion looks great. So the next step is to split this batch into four equal parts. I have to use some bigger containers for this, so it's gonna be slightly off camera. About half of all of them are in focus now. These do not have to be even layers because whenever we pour them, they're not gonna be straight lines. I'll even out these buckets a little more in a second, but for right now, I'm just gonna scrapey scrapey my big containy. And I'm gonna pull three of these buckets off to the side and we're gonna work with layer number one. The only colorant we are adding today to this soap is, and I've heard two different pronunciations now on how to say this, I've heard Jagua and Hagua, like the J being an H sound. So if someone actually knows how to pronounce that, feel free to tell me in the comments below. But it's a natural colorant. It's a dye, in fact. It's very, very concentrated. It will stain absolutely everything it touches. So if you use it, be careful. I got mine from Brambleberry. I'm gonna start by adding in just a teeny tiny bit to this first layer. This is gonna be our darkest layer. I'm gonna blend it in here with my spatula and see how dark it is. Doesn't look like it's gonna be dark enough. Add it a little more. Gonna go ahead and blend that in with my spatula. And then I'll get my stick blender and we'll blend it in that way. I feel like this might be one of those things that has to be dispersed with a stick blender. The first layer being all blended in, and you guys can see just how much of a difference the stick blender makes for that colorant. It is time to add the fragrance oil. So today I am using Dancing Waters fragrance oil. This is a Bath and Body Works duplication. Whenever I made warm vanilla sugar, it was heavily, heavily requested. I've added the proper amount of fragrance oil, so I'm gonna begin by blending it in just like so before I actually turn on the stick blender. With the fragrance oil blended in, it's now time to pour into our large slab mold. The first layer is always the easiest one because you're not having to worry about puncturing anything. So I'm just gonna dump this right in and I will scrape out my bucket. I won't be returning to this bucket, so we wanna get every single little thing out of there. This is one of the most gorgeous blue shades I have ever seen. It's like, it's not entirely a navy because there's like a teeny tiny bit of green in there. What do you think, Caleb? Cause it's not, again, it's, it's not like just a navy. It's also got some teal. While Caleb's looking up some colors, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of texture to this first layer. We are going to be adding some cocoa powder lines in between each one of the layers, and I want them to look just a little bit messy. I have in this little strainer my organic cocoa powder, so I'm just going to lightly tap it and let it sink into the soap a little bit. This is going to create a nice line between this first layer and the second one. The first 
first layer being entirely covered, I am now going to mix up the second layer of blue. We have our next layer of color mixed up, so I'm gonna break the fall using my spatula and just gently ladle it all over that first layer. Oh man, I think the blue is gonna be sort of a subtle transition, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to be like, whoa, stark light blue, really, really dark blue on the bottom. I want it to be sort of an ombre. Once again, scrapey scraping my containing. I am gonna gently move this layer around just a little bit. Going in again to lightly texture this top here give it a little definition. Okay, so my camera just stopped recording randomly, so I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what you got to see and what you didn't, but we're done with the second layer now. All the cocoa powder's on, so we're gonna start mixing up the third one. Now that the third layer and the cocoa powder line are on, I'm gonna wipe down these sides here because that's really the last time we're gonna be using the cocoa powder, so we might as well go ahead and clean it up. And we'll go ahead and mix up that final layer off camera and I'll pour it on top so I can show you guys the really cool thing we're doing on the tippity top of the soap. Final layer is a light blue gray. It's so beautiful. Just gonna waterfall it over everything. And it's a little thicker at this point. The soap is time consuming. Layers are always time consuming, but so, so worth it in the end. I'm just gonna gently bounce the top, make sure it's even that all the corners are getting some. On the very top, we're gonna do something that I've never done before. Ooh, intrigue. We're gonna take a little bit of activated charcoal in a tea strainer and put that all across the top, make it cover up the soap. I might actually have to switch to a bigger strainer because it's not letting a lot of it out. Let's see if this one fares any better. Yeah, that's a lot more like it. I'm just gonna sprinkle this all across the top. I'm gonna make it relatively even on top. Obviously, this is one of those things that's like kind of hard to get it very, very perfect, but it won't matter because we're gonna texture it. This particular activated charcoal is a little bit gritty, which is gonna be awesome. So it's gonna leave a nice texture on the very tippy top of your soap, but the inside of your bar is gonna be nice and smooth. So taking my favorite spoon, I'm now going to texture just like this, and occasionally I'm wiping off my spoon so that the charcoal doesn't get too muddied in the design. being done and I am digging it. We're gonna spritz the top with rubbing alcohol. So now that we've textured the top and I am digging the way this looks, I can't wait to show you guys a close up. We're going to spritz it liberally with rubbing alcohol. Keep the chances of soda ash way down and that's it, we're done. Oh yeah, I love it. It reminds me of like black sand. Isn't there a beach or something somewhere that has black sand? Is that in Iceland? Caleb says sure, he doesn't know. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna let this sit for 18 to 24 hours and then I will come back and I will split the slab into loaves and cut the loaves into bars after this quick commercial break. People, we have another paranormal color morph. After 24 hours, this is what the top of the slab look like. And this is what the side of the slab looked like. So obviously, when I looked at the top and I looked at the side, I thought, shoot, I've lost the batch. Something has gone wrong with this expensive colorant. I'm gonna have to scrap it and do the design with ultramarine blue. Because I thought I lost it, I went ahead and split the slab and lo and behold, the inside's blue. It's just the very end edges that are gray. What is going on there? And the whole thing gelled too. So I think with the next couple batches, we'll probably end up covering the top to see if we can bring that blue color to the very tippity top so it doesn't just, you know, fade into nothingness. Just pushing down here with my cutter. Take a bar out of the middle and this is what the soap looks like on the inside. The gradient is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this bottom part to be the darkest and then the fade to be super, super slight in between these next three. And even if the top looks slightly different than I originally imagined, I still think it looks great. The dancing water fragrance oil really pairs well with the design definitely reminds one of water, maybe the ocean, maybe a riverbed. And these cocoa powder mica lines are very distinct. I'm really, really digging it. And I'm glad that the color went ahead and changed. And I know that the color is showing up on camera as being slightly more gray than it is in real life. It really is a true gray blue. It's awesome. And look, it even turned in a weird gray color on the bottom. Like what, what is with that? I kind of like it though. I really do. Like now it's starting to kind of grow on me and it looks like I did it on purpose. Caleb joins me now with the question of the day. Would you rather be able to take back anything that you've ever said or would you rather be able to hear any conversation going on within a hundred feet of you at any given time? Oh I'd definitely rather take back things that I've said. <laughs> I think it may be distracting to hear every single conversation. Can you like fine tune which ones you're listening to? Yeah, it's like at will. Mm, I don't know. I feel like I would end up hearing things I just kind of wish I hadn't heard. So I'm gonna go with option A. What about you? Yeah, I'll probably take back things. To vote on the question of the day is really easy. All you have to do is click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Oh, I love it when soap fixes itself. In fact, this soap got even better with age because it as it can in fact this soap got even better with age because as it continued to sit and cure, the soap got even more blue and even less gray. It will be available to for it will be available to purchase on April 1st at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, royaltysoaps.com. Again, this is not an April Fool's joke, that would be just so mean. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, you can always subscribe like the video, you know, click the little thumbs up thing, turn on notifications if it doesn't irritate you. I always feel like I have to say that because it really does irritate me on most channels, so I won't be offended if mine is one of them for you. And without further ado, I will see you lovely people very, very soon. The next video coming out is actually a remake of a soap I didn't design. It was one of the very first, if not the very first soap that I created absolutely years ago that I didn't design. But let's just say that some soap designs get better with age. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that is sitting down and watching a paranormal hairtivity <laughs> transformation from Guy Tang. If you've never watched any of his videos, that man is a wizard with hair. Oh, it's so inspiring. Or making, or maybe taking some or maybe just taking a 10 minute break from a screen because you've been on it for too long. I know there's some of you out there who are now feeling very guilty. Y'all go out and enjoy the sunshine a little bit, okay? And I will see you guys soon. So until then, bye for now. Neom.